Hello everybody, welcome back to Cure for the Common Game. Today, in day number 89 of our 100 Days of EDH, we're going to talk about Planar Chaos. Probably one of my favorite sets. I know I said that about Time Spiral, but I kind of consider them the same set, almost. Block, if you will. Anyway, Planar Chaos came out in February of 2007. It had 165 cards, 50 rares, 55 uncommons, and 60 commons. Now, of those, y'all remember where Time Spiral had time-shifted cards from the past. The theme with this block is Time Spiral was the past, Planar Chaos was the present, and of course Future Sight would be the future. They were all intentionally named after existing cards. There's a Time Spiral, a Planar Chaos, and a Future Sight. But of, of those, there are 10 rares, 15 uncommons, and 20 commons that were quote-unquote time shifted now these weren't exactly what we as players would consider time shifted they are color shifted what planar chaos did was it showed us an alternate present what if things had worked differently so a popular thing that they did was they took cards and while to you know at a glance it looks like they took the color wheel and just gave it a big old spin they carefully placed cards not in what we would consider the correct color. So let's look at it. Bindlish Commander. <clears throat> it is decent for a soldier deck. Yeah, uh, four mana star star, of course. It suspends. We are continuing the suspend mechanic here because, you know, this whole block was about time. Um, actually, what this whole block was about was they knew that at some point they were going to make planeswalkers and they had to find a story reason to power down planeswalkers because up until this point they were pretty much gods and they had to find a way to power down and this time spiral storyline did that but anyway um yeah power numbers is equal number of soldiers you control so if you're building soldier travel this is probably a pretty good one and of, uh, of course if you suspend it for long enough he kind of builds his own army before he gets there Krovax, Ascendant Hero. Now, this is a color shift of the Ascendant Even car. It's dang near the same card. Six mana, four, four. Other white creatures, one, one, non-white, get minus one. Except you pay two and you return him to your hand. It, it's, a, it's almost functional color shift, which is what they were trying to do. Now, Dust Elemental, I just realized when I was building Afara that I am out of Dust Elementals. This is... Oh, it, it's such a versatile card. Four mana, six, six, flash, flying, fear. There's got to be a drawback, right? Whenever it comes into play, you return three creatures you control to their owner's hand. Now, I don't know that I've ever swung with this creature. I don't know that I've ever actually treated this as a creature. I treat this as, I'm going to save two cards, two creatures. So, because it has flash... In response to just about anything that would kill your guys, unless it had split second, you can cast the Dust Elemental, pick up two creatures, plus the Dust Elemental, and now I don't care if your board wipe happens. It also works great for blink style decks or decks that you want to keep putting creatures into play to, to garner some effect, or leaves play for that matter. Magus of the Tabern Tabernacle. Uh, uh, Magus of the Tabernacle. Now, Planar Chaos's cycle of Magus of was of lands, old lands. Like this is Tabernacle at Pendrevale, which they cannot print because it is on the reserve list. But they made an enchantment back in Weatherlight, and now they have a Magus here in Planar Chaos. Rebuff the Wicked. Now, I love this card. I love white counterspells just simply because nobody sees it coming. Uh, and this is a hard counter for something that targets a permanent you control, which happens, you know, quite frequently. Retether. I really thought I'd have seen more Retether deck, or Retether played, but it's... um. Oh, shoot, I forgot the word, name of that card way back. Um, it's a Replenish for Auras that only hits Auras. So in your Aura deck... You probably want to be running a retether. White main line is kind of the same way. Now, white main line does, like if you've got an Alluren, it's kind of an infinite loop if you want it to be. If you've got a comes into play deal or produce some effect, 
um, you can play the white main line and then pick the white main line back up. And if you have a Lurin, of course, you're playing three CMC cards for uh, creatures for the free. So, but I like the white main line just as a another. I'm gonna save my dude. Manatize. Now I know what you're thinking. I mana leak is understandable to use, but the counter unless you pay one. Now, if you're playing a blue deck, people, or if there's a blue deck, you know, a heavy counter deck at the table, yeah, people will think twice about tapping out. But against mono white, people want value so much. They want that X to equal as much as they can. They want that, they can't wait to get that last land to put their commander into play. They don't think about counter unless you pay one more, especially out of a white mana. Now, this was the first time we got Mesa Enchantress. This is a color shift of Verdurin Enchantress from the core sets way back. Uh, exact same card, except it's white. Popper of Nodes. Now, this is Drop of Honey from way, way back Arabian Nights. Um, it's the exact same card, it's just it's white. At the beginning of your upkeep, you destroy the creature with the, the smallest power creature. And then, you know, if they're tied, of course, you choose. And there's, if there's no creatures, you sacrifice this. It's... Drop of Honey. Aramancer's Guys. Another aura that I thought would see a, just a shade more play than it is. Uh, it gets plus, Enchanted Creature gets plus two, plus two for each aura attached to it and has Vigilance. Blue card granting Vigilance. Welcome to Planar Chaos. Things are on their ear. Body Double. It, it's a clone of a creature in a graveyard. That's it. Which, to be honest with you, is not bad. I don't know it's exactly worth one more solid mana than clone, but I've played it. Braids, the good one, the not banned one. A Conjurer Adept. Now, this is a color shift of the, the banned braids. Uh, four mana, two, two, legendary human wizard. But at the beginning of each player's upkeep, they get to put an artifact creature or land just from hand into play, just for the free. Why not? So typically we're playing, if you're playing Braids, a lot of people say Group Hug, but uh, I think us as an EDH playing populace have have wisened up to the fact that Group Hug never means Group Hug. It's, it's, it's more like we're all going to draw cards till I find my whatever. Combo, win condition, whatever. And that's typically what Braids is, you, it, it, is you're going to draw a ton of cards and just... Everybody's going to drop stuff for free until you get, you know, your blight steal or whatever the heck it is you need to win. Okay. Dreamscape Artist, I think, is one of the most underused commons ever in the history of the game of Magic. Okay. What if I told you that every single card in your deck could double function as a harrow? Right? Okay. Dreamscape Artist is a spell shaper. Uh, it's two mana for, for the 1-1. One, one. That's your investment, that two mana. Okay? Uh, you have a pretty non-threatening guy here. Now, you spend two colorless and a blue and tap this guy and discard a card. That's where the spell shaper part comes in. Spell shapers, a lot of people look at it as discarding, but if you look at it as I am turning this card, more than likely something useless to me, and I'm turning it into this other card. You sack a land, search a library, two basics, put them into play. This is on a blue creature, folks. I cannot believe this is on blue. Now, granted, we're in Planar Chaos, so, you know, the whole world is topsy-turvy at this point. But that's Harrow. Think about it. When you cast Harrow, you're spending three mana. You're putting the Harrow on the stack, so you're losing the Harrow. You're losing, you're effectively discarding a card, but you're paying for it. You're sacking a land to go get two. So with this Dreamscape Artist in a color that has no land ramp, you can have a repeatable Harrow. I'm just saying, it is crazy strong. Magus of the Bazaar. Now this is the uh, Bazaar Baghdad Magus. Uh, two mana for zero, one. Of course, draw two, then discard three. Pongify. 
I don't know where this, uh, I think this was green color shifted. I'm not sure. I can't remember. But for one blue mana instant, it says destroy target creature. You know, we don't really care what comes after that. I mean, it could say de destroy target creature, you know, blow up your car. It doesn't matter. This is a card they'll see play. Yeah, they get a 3-3-8. Three, three, more than likely, way less threatening than what you killed. Frozen Ether was a very special card for me. This is a color-shifted Kismet. And I loved it because it, it allowed uh, Stasis decks to be mono blue. Yep, I'm that guy. Ovenize. This is a removal spell. That's all I know how to put it. Uh, it's a heck of a combat trick. As far as removal, it only kind of works during combat. You know, if somebody's coming at you and you're just like, eh, I think it's going to be a 0-1. Lose all abilities. And I think I'm going to block it. Extirpate. Boy, it was hard for me to say that correctly. I had a guy call it extirpate back then. Um, by the way, the way these booster packs were set up is you could get a possibility of triple rares because you could get a regular rare a time shift or uh, a color shifted rare and a foil rare it could totally happen now i saw the black pack opened up three times once we cover the other two cards we'll get this is one because this has always been a hot card uh now for our format uh it's almost now, I'm going to build, like, a surgical deck. I'm going to build that with all of the extra paint type, you know, get cards out of the library. I don't know what I hope to accomplish with it, but it's a thing I haven't done, and I'm going to do it, and eventually they'll make a legend where it makes sense, you know? So, but unless we're running scared of rats, advisors, or cl a, a very certain cleric, um, this is not really that amazing. Uh, but it is a great card. Miri the Cursed. This is what would have happened if Miri had killed Selena and got the curse instead of Crovax. Miri would have turned um, badass, for lack of a better word. Sorry about that. But four mana, three, two flying, first strike, haste, and uh, the vampire ability uh, deals damage to a creature. She gets counter. So, whoa. Now, I have built this uh, tribal black cats. That's right. I used all three of them. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it's she's really really good temporal extortion now this is a card uh, this is card number two in the black pack we'll get to that temporal extortion I think I missed one are these oh that's right the color shifty thing throws off the alphabetization because they did all the regular cards and then the color shifted ones. But when you play it, any player may pay half their life, round it up. If they do, this spell is countered. Take an extra turn. Now, there aren't that many black spells that let you take an extra turn. As a matter of fact, this may be it. But also, a player, I mean, it's going to pass through some hands. Everybody at the table has a chance to tell you no, and that's fine. Because would you play a card that said four mana, target player loses half their life? I would. <sighs> Damnation. I, I can't remember who was it, um, working on the set at the time. I think it was, uh, this is a moral quote if I'm not mistaken. They saw this card and said, okay, this is all we need. All we need is this poster size, the name of the set, and the date. That's it. That's all we need. We don't need to advertise. This will be enough. Um, this Kev Walker art's amazing. It's the exact opposite of what the Wrath of God art was at the time. Um, if you'll notice here, it's just a, like a giant black hole. It's just sucking everything up. And the Wrath of God is just a giant white ball that's just blowing everything apart. So while Wrath of God does blow, damnation sucks. Uh, <laughs> but it is a a wonderful card. They uh, they're never going to reprint this as much as we want them to. But 
it is amazing. And, and of course, they were still running scared of the awesome power of regeneration at the time, I guess. No profusion. Now, I like how we have this reserve list, you see. And we can't print cards on the reserve list. And it would be against the spirit of the reserve list if we made functionally identical copies. Recycle is an enchantment, and it is on the reserve list. And Recycle, y'all read along with me. I'm going to read Recycle. Recycle costs four generic green green. It is enchantment that says skip your draw step. Whenever you play a card, draw a card. Your maximum hand size is two. This is a not a functional reprint because, you know, the mana symbols are different, but it's the same card. As a matter of fact, for our purposes in EDH, I use, if I make a point to where if my deck wants this ability, I make sure it's got green and black in it so I have two copies of it. Shrouded Lore is a color shift off an old Ice Age card. And the green one, when I did Ice Age, I kind of skipped over, I'll admit but black, well, number one, it kind of makes more sense in black. And number two, it's um, eh, it's really good. Um, you target an opponent, more than likely we you have influenced this opponent through table politics. And they're going to pick the card you want. And, or you can say, no, you know, spend another mana, give me a different one. Now, I like using it, of course, when the only card in my graveyard is the one I want back, so... A Chroma Angel of Fury. Now, this was still back in the day when we had large pre-releases that you would have to travel and you'd get a car full of your buddies and you'd go to Nashville's where we went to. And I had... I, this was the actually the first pre-release I ever left with a complete set. Um, but I sat down in my flight. That's what they called... Uh, they were like mini tournaments. It was a 32-person flight. And it, it was a tournament into itself, you know. And then when that filled up, they just started another one. I sat down. I was in flight number one because I got there super early, of course. And I opened up my six packs of Planar Chaos. And I got a playset of Acromas. And I called a judge. The hand went up and I said, Judge. He, The judge walks over to me and says, um, We're in deck building. Why do you need a judge? And I said, I just wanted you to witness that I did actually just open these. I said, this is the first flight. Nobody's had a chance to get them. But I just opened four copies of this. And he said, well, you paid for your pre-release a couple of times, did you? <laughs> um, but uh, while this one is good, it was super hyped at the time. Uh, the price has somewhat settled down. Now the artwork is outstanding. Uh, but... It's nowhere near as awesome as the white one, you know. It does have flying, trample, and then protection from the two enemy colors, which in this case would be white and blue. It also has fire breathing and then morph for some unknown reason. Detrivor. Now, if you are a fan of Ruination, let me introduce you to Detrivor. By the way, Ruination is an old sorcery for four that destroys all non-basic lands uh, from several sets back. But this power and toughness equals the number of non-basic land cards in your opponent's graveyard. So every time they sack a fetch land, a terramorphic and evolving a whatever, or you just shot down all their lands with the... Uh... Yeah, it's pretty... Now, boom and bust. This was the first time that we had split cards of the same color. I don't... This could have very well been a two-mana spell for boom and then had a kicker. You know, it, if you spent four or more, you could destroy all lands instead. But I think it, it was just the object of having a split card. There was several, but they were monocolored. It's weird. Blood Knight is, of course, the uh, color shift of the White Knight. Well, I guess you could say or the Black Knight, for that matter. Pyrohemia is the color shift of Pestilence. So you spend a red mana to deal one damage to everything. So that's pretty good. And actually, it kind of seems like this is where it should have belonged in the first place. Simeon Spirit Guide, if you all know this guy, if you've ever played Modern or heard anybody talk about Modern, you've probably heard of the Simeon Spirit Guide. Now, this is color shifted from um, 
way, way back Elvish Spirit Guide. It was a green elf that did the same thing here. Oh, hey, and it's a spirit for all you building red Kamigawa Spirit decks, right? Hunting Wilds, I think, gets overlooked quite a bit. It is, yeah, people look at the four cost and the four kicker, but ignore that kicker. Just read what the card does. You search your library for up to two forest cards and put them into play tap, then shuffle. Okay, forest cards. So you go get your temple garden and your um, whatever, you know, your duels, because they are forest cards. It does not say basic. And this is four mana for two lands, which is pretty much the standard rate. You know, explosive vegetation, um, the one that only gets basic for it. You know, there's, there's a bunch of them. But this one, I think, doesn't, doesn't see enough play because the kicker turns people off. You ain't got to play it. Janet O'Janan of Ephrava. Yeah, I think I did that pretty well. Uh, six mana, five, five, forest walk. Legendary cat warrior lord. It's a mouthful. I tell you this, though. They couldn't have fit another letter on that type line. Uh, whenever it attacks or blocks... You get a cat token, 2-2 two, two cat token, with Forest Walk, so it's really good. Um, obviously, the, I haven't built this deck yet, but it's probably going to be a combat-centered deck. Magus of the Library. Now, this was a library uh, of Alexandria. Now, if you've never played with the Library of Alexandria, it's, it's a beautiful card, and I had one years ago, but... When you draw it in your opening hand, it demands its own game style. I mean, you all your plans go out the window and you're like, okay, I have to slow play now because I want to draw these two cards a turn. I can't dump my entire hand and then my library is useless. So this is uh, on a green creature. I mean, it's two mana and it does the same, same thing. You tap it to draw a card. But only if you've got seven, which uh, Essence Warden is, of course, a color shift of Soul Warden. And, you know, why not? Let's make it an elf. Harmonize. Now, this, I believe, is, is the greatest color shifted card of the entire set. Uh, for, uh, just mana for cards. Now, green has sensed this. They have gotten card draw. It is always tied to creatures or lands in some way, but... Uh, this is, to my knowledge, the only card that is just mana for cards. And, of course, it's color shift. Now we get into the five legendary dragons. Now, they're all six mana for six six flyers. Uh, the colors of which vary. There are three generic, and, of course, this one's blue, red, green. Intet. Whenever Intet deals combat damage to a player, they all have that line. You may pay... Three, one of which is their primary color. If you do, you remove the top card of your library from the game face down. You may look at, as long as it remains, you may play a card without paying its mana. Yeah, as long as it remains. So, it is, I don't know that I've built an intent. I'm not sure if I've built any of these, come to think about it. We'll see. Numoth the Devastator. Now, he's the amazing one. Now, these are, are a lot of these see play in your side of the Urdrago decks, uh, especially Numoth here, because the object is you're going to attack with the Scion and then turn it into Numoth, pop two lands, Numoth chills in the graveyard, and then the very next one you get is one of these others that bring it back to life. So, yeah, destroying two lands on combat damage is pretty fierce, especially if you choose this to be your commander. Oh, man. Now, Oros the Avenger. Uh, was Oros the one that gave out at Worlds that year? Uh, no, no, it wasn't. Treva was. Uh, uh, here, you pay the th uh, two in the white, and it deals three damage to each non-white creature. While that is effective, especially as a build-around, you can make sure all the creatures in your deck are like black-white or red-white or just plain white. So, that's the thing. Radha, heir to Keld. Now, she was, this is before she uh, filled out, pretty much. Uh, Radha, the story behind her is she is part elf, part uh, Keldon barbarian. Uh, so, she was kind of an outcast until, uh, you know, she 
took over things. But here, when she attacks, you get double red to your mana pool. Well, I'm sorry. Now you just get double red. We don't talk about mana pools. And then she taps for a green. Um, so your double red, would you would have to spend during that phase or else it would go away. So it's perfect for the card Bloodlust. I think that's the idea. Teneb the Harvester. Now this is the one that uh, typically your second grab with Scion is you're going to you know, or or you're going to hard cast it or tutor it up something. You want to nab out there to get the dragons that you're putting into the graveyard with your Scion back. Vorosh. Now, I have built Vorosh. Uh, it's a plus one, plus one counter deck. Um, deals combat damage, you know. Three mana for six, plus one, plus one counters. That's not bad, but that makes him, let's see. He's going to hit you first for six. And then I'm going to put some counters on him. I'm going to make him a 12-12. So he's going to hit you the second time. You'll have taken eight, no, 18. And then he's going to get six more counters. So he'll be an 18. So that's only a three-hit clock. So even though Vorosh is a 6-6, six, six, it's still part of the three-hit clock. In the serious plus one, plus one counter deck, he'd maybe way more than that. One of the greatest lands ever to be made. And... Quite frankly, Wizards, I doubt anybody is l listening from Wizards to me 26 minutes into this video, but Urborg, Tomb of Yawgmoth, why is this not a cycle? There could be, and you could do it, you, you could print one every four or five years. Uh, there would be a specific actual plane that we would go to that would be that would have a legendary land that makes everything forest or a super devastating land that makes everything plains or whatever i don't know but this would be amazing you printed black yes it's good it is strong but it didn't break anything it ain't never been banned in any format so uh, and i love the actual face of yawgmoth in the water that's beautiful and that's what I've got for Planar Chaos. I do appreciate y'all watching. Uh, y'all let me know what you think. And um, we will see you tomorrow.